This is a full review of the Alfa Romeo Giulia facelift. So what has changed with the Alfa Giulia and also today the Alfa Giulia Veloce S Petrol just here for you. With Thomas and Jonas behind the camera, as you know in exterior, interior and the driving experience, high up the Alps, 2000 meters of altitude, nice landscape, beautiful car, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! A model gear change or an update of a vehicle you also call facelift even though when the face is not being changed and they intentionally did not want to change the face because they said the customers were pretty happy with the face. Well I'm happy that we have Misano blue as the exterior color for today which is clearly a typical Thomas blue here on Auto Fuel. Then well one thing they should have brought to this vehicle are LED headlamps. That's missing however they are not starting with halogen anymore all Julias now get the Xenon headlamps as standard, at least, and then optional, the Bi-Xenon, which we also have here right today. Other than that, the typical Alpha design, here with the number plate just on the one side, and then typical Alpha grille, beautiful sensual shape also here on the front hood. So design-wise, I think, without a doubt, one of the most beautiful ones in the midsize segment. Or what do you think? The length is 4 meters 64, 183 inches or 15 foot 2 and wheel sizes go from 16 to 19 inch and 19 inch is also here what we have today, really massive and also with those contrasting brake calipers. The Veloce bed right here already has a sporty look, you've already seen it in the front, black frames around the windows, so the Veloce version is not the Quadrifoglio which has this 2.9 liter V6 engine. But this one here already with more horsepower soon to those engines and of course the sportier look here in the Veloce trim. And there's also a Veloce TI available and they differ a little bit as for the features they come with. There's an adaptive suspension available which we also have today and the general design is pretty simple in the side profile here with a round shape then there's a dropping line at the height of the door handle and well a quite coupe like sedan shape here as for the window profile. We could not deliver you the car all clean today, it's not possible in those road conditions, but I think it still looks quite fancy, doesn't it? Well, the Alfa Giulia is not an all new car, but I think they really managed to keep up a timeless design, also here with those quite elegant tail limbs. Q4, the logo then for the all-wheel drive, but this model here is also now available with rear-wheel drive only, soon more deals to that. In the lower part we have a more aggressive diffuser in the Veloce and those outer tips here are just for beauty, the real exhaust tips are on the inside, but they look somewhat the same, they're just a little bit smaller. So what do we have under the hood? First of all, in general for the Alfa Giulio, there's a 2.2 liter diesel available with 190 horsepower, optional all-wheel drive or 210 horsepower, always all-wheel drive. And then this one here, the 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine, either with 200 horsepower and rear-wheel drive or with 280 horsepower, now also available with rear-wheel drive and optional with all-wheel drive, the one we have here today, all-wheel drive 280 horsepower. And then in the quality folio, you get the 2.9 liter V6 with 510 horsepower. But this one here already, the 280 horsepower engine, 5.2 seconds is the acceleration figure. That's already quite decent. The smaller petrol engine would have 6.6 .6 seconds as the acceleration figure. So that would already be enough, actually. If you have a rear drive only, you're a little bit more flexible. You will have a more narrow turning circle here with the all-wheel drive model. The wheels don't turn in so much. So you have to think about what's more important to you. I think when you can get a car as rear-wheel drive, probably take it as rear-wheel drive. And the low horsepower spec would also be just fine. But the driving experience then today with this one, looking forward to that. And I think the engine cover and you know the whole setup here, 
looks already quite promising, doesn't it? Key. It's pretty thick actually, it makes a good quality impression. However, it might be also pretty thick then in the pocket. That would be the disadvantage. Keyless entry here when pressing the knob to close the vehicle or put your hand on the inside to open it. Door closing sound. Yeah, quite solid. Then soft materials at the inside of the doors in the front and a fancy door handle right there. You also some, you know, spiced up door buttons but that's nothing new here for the facelift we also have the optional sound system in here which is you know quite decent from the sound then a new steering wheel that's one of the major changes so the whole steering wheel is new and also the steering feel so we'll later talk more about that in the driving part upgrade assistance systems for example here for the cruise control the levers and here also for the active lane keeping assist so now more towards level two autonomous driving and keeping up with the competition that's nice you see here the shifting panels they are separated from the steering wheel and pretty large then we have those round turbine style vents also soft touch of the dashboard seating there are sport seats that coming with the Veloce version, both Veloce and Veloce Ti. The Veloce Ti, by the way, would standardly come with Alcantara on the middle part, at least in European markets. The choices really depend on the market. For example, in US configurator, I could only find animal skin like we see here at the moment. Especially in European markets, Germany, for example, you get a fabric seat, full fabric. You get a fabric leatherette mix, which would be also cool. So fabric inside, leatherette outside. And then also, as I said, here with the Alcantara. So you have to check out which options are available on your market. Or maybe just ask your Alpha dealer for that. Of course, we can recommend a fabric seating choice. That it's, or the Alcantara that is a little bit warm in winter. Now it's really cold already here. And of course, also a little bit cooler in summer when you don't have the slick seating choices. And also comfort-wise, by the way, so those... Um, no matter if it's now like animal skin or the leather red, when you have the slick surfaces, they're also a little bit stiffer as for the very surface. When you have a fabric or Alcantara surface, surface it adapts a little bit more to your body and you know to you to your bones, you know, in, in in your lower body and so on. So it's also more comfortable. But in general, it's actually quite a nice seating position. Mm, again, maybe on those animal skin seat, not maybe on the long run when you have like four or five hours or so. Um, but so far, first impression is actually quite good. Also very soft here from the head restraint. That's cool. Headroom-wise, 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. That still leaves enough headroom right there. No problem. There's no panoramic roof in this very vehicle. But of course, there's one available. Then steering wheel can be adjusted. Quite a lot in height and also in reach. Like this. And... You always get this very sporty alpha cockpit here now where the gauges, those classic gauges, are put in very deeply. This is always something emotional to look at them directly when you start the vehicle. And you do start it right here with the start-stop engine knob. And we're going to into details now about the news of the infotainment system. First of all, last comment here to the seat. The lower area can be put a little bit longer. And there's also electric seat control. We can also put the seat a little bit higher and also the back part of the seat. But my, my favorite is really like this very soft head restraint. It's like, hmm, like for a nice nap in between, hmm, might not be, be too bad. We see a lot of decent interior quality, but however, one thing that is not that well done is here, the handle opener for the front hood is like this whole area here. There you also um, open the, you know, the hatch in the rear, but here this one is like, I mean, not sure what they thought about that. Maybe that they, you know, don't open the hood that often, but when you have an Alfa Romeo, you maybe want to show the engine off to your friends from time to time, so that should be a little bit, you know, more resonating to the rest of the interior quality. Now to the interior overview. We see here a very sensual form and soft touch materials again. That is very nicely done. 
here also in the lower part so a good build quality as we see here then the screen is actually quite well integrated in this dashboard so more details to that what's new is either you get a new seven inch screen so it's a little bit smaller than the, like the, the screen part of the whole panel or this new 8.8 .8 inch and this here is also touchscreen now so that's big news so to say so far only with the controller in the lower part now you have the choice with the bigger one so either touch or then using this lower control knob and again zoom more details to the infotainment system then the steering wheel view right there again completely new steering wheel it looks more modern also feels a little bit better right side volume control for example or picking up the phone and on the left side then from the cruise control told you that already earlier those instruments again fancy because they have this sporty style left side typical analog meter right side for the speed and what's also cool is when we do a startup of the vehicle then the arrows go all the way to the right end and then back to the left again and in the middle part you have a digital screen for example um, you can get some information on uh, fuel economy right there yeah wait a minute so we have to start the car for that here we go so and then we can and interesting is i'll give you a more decent fuel economy figure when running straight later but here at the moment when we're going uphill we are already about 15 liters and the funny thing is it doesn't go any th any more above that so obviously yeah you know when there's more like 15 liters uh, of fuel a uh, few kilometers per hundred kilometers we just say it stays at 15 so we don't show like 16 17 no just 15 maximum <laughs> nice idea right yeah <laughs> so um but you can also get a nice digital speedometer in, in the middle part or for example also some assistant info information and here again to see how the shifting pedals they stay just where they are even if you move the steering wheel so and what else to this interior we have on the other side we have the climate unit and this is actually quite good because it's still control them while driving and also as you get quite good quality right there here for warmer and colder and also for the vent strength you also have a heated steering wheel option of course and heated seats and in the lower part here there's one usb supply usb a that also works for the connection to apple carplay or android auto 12 volt power supply with a nice metal knurling around then you have some sp space here in the front for a smartphone that works adaptive cup holders and then there's a completely new middle console also with like a you know checkered structure right there that feels good you have a new shifting lever that's new as well that also with an italian flag <laughs> yeah nice then you have a classic volume knob and this round pressing turning knob this one is also new the previous one was a little bit loose so to say when you did like you know something like this here now you can move it up and down right left but also turn it and this one feels better now better quality and a hotkey to go to the home menu and as well as an option and then when you lift up this middle console right there it's yeah it could be maybe a little bit better attached but still quite okay then you open it and you have now new and inductive charging platform for your smartphone there's also a cable connection here and that is going to the usb a or also now the usb c if you like and those ones are also for connecting to the smartphone interface so infotainment system first of all the sound of this harman kardon system and yeah, it's actually quite decent so like that so i would you know as a music lover probably also go for this option then you have this new main menu so different you know app views so to say you can also go to a climate menu but since everything is menu in the lower area i'm not sure why we would need that exactly then i can go back to the home menu and look at the car internal gps and it looks a little bit dated but the good thing is that it's quite responsive so that's actually quite okay so this would be one possibility the other of course to now you can see you can also use it with touch you can also drag and drop to reorder those widgets but um this i'm not sure why this function is so prominent in the menu there you always 
try to click, oh, that's the home menu. No, it's not the home menu. It's it's for reordering everything. And then you can go to the Apple CarPlay. That's better integration now. It goes all the way in the widescreen format. Looks like this. And then you can always go back to the alpha menu right there. So I think we can really say that with this facelift, interior quality definitely improved. But one strange thing I found here is when you move the main mirror, I mean, you can normally move that, you know, but when you do it with one hand, especially, you know, like, what's this, you know? I mean, it's not that it's not properly attached, but to this side, it does move. To the other side, you know, not. But when you put it to the left side, then it goes like this. So you have to, like, hold it tight and then just move it like with two hands strange function right you know like almost like um you know like when something is not supposed to break on you know motorcycles on the outside like levers or something that they uh you know give way a little bit but here not sure what this function is meaning well and the screen has been updated but the rear view camera clearly not because the resolution of the rear view camera is yeah, I mean, okay, yes, it's also dirty now um, because of this snowy en environment, but uh, still, rear view camera wise and also the brightness it delivers, mm, not so much things you can see there, but it's still good to have it. Well, guys, I always have been a fan of Alfa Romeo design on the exterior, but there's a catch. <laughs> yeah. The space on the interior first of all look at that and we do have soft touch material also on the rear doors that's cool good quality as for that not sure what kind of beverages you should put in here maybe like you know small glasses with um you know smoothie for babies uh, i don't know <laughs> that's the only thing it's probably suitable for and then the design again is quite nice but you already see that the whole area here right is pretty thick so there's hardly much space to get in and also the leg room as the seat as i have put it at the moment when i'm driving as a rather tall driver yeah and then let's try it again inside shoe tap of course for the snow and yeah i mean somehow it does fit but yeah, I'm already um, hitting the back here with, with my knees and headroom-wise also maybe directly fits, but yeah, so legroom is pretty much cramped and that's also, mm, you know, if you compare it to other competitors in the segment, rather, yeah, rather bad, definitely. You can get along somewhat, but not that well. So that's not the strength of this car. Um, also, the bench here is quite short and so on. Yeah, that's it. However, we do have isofix at the outside seat, so maybe more suitable than for child seats. And then there's also this middle armrest with um, some adaptive cup holders. And since we are in a skiing region here at the moment, we can also just move the middle part down here as for a ski hatch function. And here in the back part of the middle console, not only again the nice turbine vents style, but here two more USB supplies, USB-A and also seat heating. But of course, that's again an option. And there you can see this big middle tunnel here. Of course, it's a rear-wheel drive car and you know, or all-wheel drive optionally. And so in the middle part, there's no space whatsoever for legs. Now to the trunk right there. And of course, you're limited as for the sedan building style right there but you know it goes actually quite long in there and that you have better impression i can also put a backpack inside so height wise this does still fit yes and some measurements so the width here is less than a meter so a little bit less than a meter in width the length is also a little bit less than a meter and the height here is 47 centimeters you have to unlock the seats from here like this and then you have to go around to the rear compartment and flip them or with the earlier shown ski hatch function you can just put the middle part down so that would also be possible you can get them a little bit flatter if you would put up the head restraints so that would be possible and then we have here a maximum loading length to the driver's seat as I would be driving of 173 centimeters.
welcome. <laughs> so that was acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and starting in a slight curve with this all-wheel drive, a little slippery from the road surface. So we had, you know, some sliding out in this D mode, this dynamic mode. And although it is all-wheel drive, you know, we had a slight rear drift and that shows you that it does have a rear wheel bias. Pretty cool, right? And also thanks to the all-wheel drive, you could get all the grip to the ground. That was, of course, pretty cool. So, yeah, the all-wheel drive does have advantages, definitely. Of course, you know, when you're living in the, you know, those alpine regions here, um, then it might make sense. Other than that, it also comes with disadvantages, yes. If you think about, for example, a turning circle. So when you have this version, which is now available, also in the 280 horsepower version with rear wheel drive, you can turn the front wheels a little bit more in, you know, to, to both directions. Therefore, reduce turning circle and the car maybe feels a little bit more agile. Then again, the question is if you need the all-wheel drive for uh, like, you know, winterly conditions and so on, that might make sense. And I mean, acceleration here, 5.2 seconds. When you're going just straight to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And, and there's no, you know, no figure for the rear-wheel drive model yet. We have to check that out later. Um, of course, this car can also bring serious track to the ground just by the rear wheels. It's also, you know, planned as a rear-wheel drive car from, from beginning on. But then again, as soon as it gets slippery, like now, you know, was a little bit of dirt on the road and so on, then the all-wheel drive really has a big advantage. Whew. Wow, that was <laughs> a pretty cool thing. Um, by the way, when we are in this dynamic, um, this you know, sporty mode, then we can, when we have, you know, still want to have some comfort, we can click on this suspension button here in the middle console, and then we have the soft dampening. So you stay in this sporty mode where the gears are turned up higher, yet again, you have a softer dampening, like in the normal modes. This, um, you know, this can indeed make sense, you know, why not? So I think I, I really, really fancy that. And when you're driving, you know, in city traffic and so on, then you usually would go to the normal, the N mode, or then to the A mode, I think it was called advanced, advanced efficiency or something. So that does the exact opposite as the sport mode. So it reduces the throttle input gears are turned up a little bit lower, earlier upshifting and so on, and then the D mode, then the sports mode, later shifting up and so on. So depending on what you want to have and um, yeah, how you want to have more or less fun or about the fuel economy, of course. Yeah, talking about fuel economy, the lowest fuel economy I could score here was about 10 liters or more kilometers like 23 mpg us 28 mpg uk and that was really rather you know trying and yeah <laughs> so you rather should expect even worse fuel economy and that's probably also one of the things here um, about this vehicle that won't work that well you know to, to score a good fuel economy well and since we come to a stop here we can go back to this d mode and um, just, you know, accelerate out this traffic light. Of course, sound-wise, yeah, you know, four-cylinder, not too much coming there. So, yeah, I mean, it's okay, but it's nothing that would be um, really emotional. But this car has some serious power, definitely. And especially when you're on this D mode, the throttle input is that crisp that you just slide your the throttle and it, it jumps forward. You can always use the shifting pedals as well. They are fixed to the steering wheel so they do, do not move alongside. Some say that's better. Others say that's worse. Hmm. Me personally, I prefer to have them on the steering wheel uh, because you know when you're sometimes turning them, you know, turning the steering wheel, then you you know hit the, the pedals you have to get used to that you really um, you know stay close with your hands 
and then only reach out when you really need it. And they give a good feedback, nice clicking sound as well. So that's also a lot of fun, definitely. Yeah, click, click. <laughs> well, I can also use them a little bit better and we can show you some agility. And this car really behaves very well, well, very, very neutrally balanced, like that. And it is, yeah, it is a little bit more loose, so to say, than some of the competitors. A little bit more aggressive, mm, not that stable as for the grip. Of course, the road here is somewhat wet, yes, but that's also how this car is um, meant to be. Of course, we have traction from the all-wheel drive in this case here when we accelerate out, but the car is definitely a little bit more challenging to drive than the German premium manufacturers, they like the, you know, the, the mid-size models of those. But that's probably also a thing why you would go then for the Alfa Romeo in this case. Yeah, a lot of fun to use the shifting pedals here. And one thing I found best with the facelift now is the steering does indeed have more feel. So one of the major upgrades is new steering feel. Not only the steering wheel, but also the steering feel. So before it was, mm, let's say, very direct and precise, yes, but without precision, you know, and it felt only arcade-alike, like in a computer game and, you know, with, without any contact to the road. And that has improved now, definitely. So I feel more connected, driver, car and road, that works very well. So in this D mode, let's see if there's any difference to the N mode in, in steering. It's here, here now. Back to D mode. Yeah, it gets, gets a little bit stiffer. And I like that, especially in the D mode when it's a little bit stiffer as for the steering feedback. That's good. Yeah, pretty good in the acceleration. You can also check out the speed. And it's a lot of fun to drive this car, definitely. So, yeah, I, I would say it's definitely among the most fun mid size vehicles. This petrol engine also more fun than the diesel. I had the diesel, I think, like a year ago or something. And you all guys also want to request a petrol review, and so that's why I'm delivering it to you right now. And of course, when you have the chance, just gonna mention it again, to buy such a petrol mid-size sedan, I would go for the re uh, rear drive one. Again, unless you really need um, you need it somehow like uh, in those regions here. So, wow, well, enjoy this here together with me. Car's really somewhat loose. I mean, <laughs> not that much grip on this road. It always depends also on the tires, definitely, and of course the conditions, road, and so on. But I really have to be a little bit careful here. Do you feel that as well, Jonas? That we, <laughs> yeah, slide a little bit. It's very, very interesting, definitely. So be careful, guys. And yeah, the road is a little bit wet, so um, always watch out for that. Those 19-inch wheels, by the way, comfort-wise, you do feel them, of course. So especially when we go in over some bumps and in this D mode, it can get a little bit rough. Then again, when I set the soft dampening, that definitely helps. So I can recommend that you don't lose the feeling for the car when you have the soft dampening active. You just have a little bit more comfort. I think that's also the reason why they introduced that here, that you can still set it in the sports mode. So very good decision that you can have a little bit more sporty acceleration. Yet again, you remain with the suspension comfort. And that's, I think, that's quite cool, definitely. So suspension-wise, there's this adaptive suspension available for the Alfa Giulia. And I would also recommend to pick that to increase the comfort. So far, I think when you are in the soft mode, it is a quite good compromise. When you're in the normal dynamic mode, then yeah, it can get a little bit rough for everyday driving situations. It might be fun then when you have countryside roads which are very, very well built. Then you get the suspension a little bit stiffer. You can enjoy that one a little bit more. 
As for noise insulation, no complaints there. I mean, we were also driving one kilometer or 62 miles an hour, and this was actually quite fine, so it wasn't too loud. No chance to drive on the German motorway today because we're in Austria, so we cannot comment on like 160 kilometers an hour noise insulation or something. For most markets, it will anyway be more relevant this 100 kilometers or 60 miles how that one behaves then and definitely also a beautiful landscape ride for you once again hope you also enjoy that together with us that we can give you nice car things and also nice landscape things at the same time um, here by the way bing 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 why there are new assistance systems built in this vehicle they have been massively upgraded blind spot monitor is also in the um, in this car when the yellow triangle is flashing here the lane departure warning when I'm getting too close to the middle part and there's also new adaptive cruise control built in here which is also with this vehicle and they claim level 2 autonomous drive so there is also separate gauge for that in this, you know, in this instruments right there so there we are and so you can set the uh, adaptive cruise control it's keeping the distance to the car in front of you and then when the road is allowing that you know when you have a straight road or motorway for example tested that earlier then the car is also kept in lane actively so when you're getting you know closer towards the side here activate or deactivate it here with the steering wheel symbol at the left side of the steering but at the moment it's not green so at the moment car tells me this is probably a road where you should steer yourself so it doesn't clear the assistance system so to say um, but again I had a road earlier where that did work just a straight road and then it was also quite flawless so slightly uh, counter steered then when I was coming to the side of the road and was keeping me in the lane so good that they also found some upgrades there it's always important to have those assistance systems especially as for the blind spot monitor so indeed i mean some model year upgrades or facelifts they do, do not change too much it's also not like a super super major upgrade what they've done here but i think especially assistance systems this helps and of course my favorite feature is definitely that they brought more feeling to the steering wheel you know they also gathered the feedback there from from the reviewers and also from from the customers and I think that's really a very good decision. The car was fun to drive before, but now to me it's more, even more fun to drive because it feels more natural at the very same time. So you can enjoy a cozy driving feeling. It's silent enough noise insulation wise. At the same time, it's one of, um, one of the mid-sized vehicles that tells you most, drive me, drive me now and keep continuing that. <laughs> So really enjoying that ride. Definitely a little bit more fun with the petrol. Mm, yeah, I mean, probably would go for the rear-wheel drive then model to have maybe a little bit more fun. Mm, but then again, especially when you have the 280 horsepower version. Yeah, when the roads are a little bit slippery, be careful with that. The electronic stability control with this vehicle is not too strict, <laughs> as we already felt. So uh, you have to be able to drive such a vehicle with uh, such horsepower figure and we will drive then. I think the most clever pick will be the base petrol engine with we will drive because it is the same displacement and one of the rules also to keep your engine let's say you know a good shape over over long over a longer period of time. Biggest displacement but lowest horsepower figure version. That's always good because then, you know, the engine is not tuned that high. Not so much stress on the engine. So my pick would definitely be the petrol engine with the smallest horsepower figure. And then you have something very agile, but which is still suitable to the car. Um, here, I mean, you have abundance of power. It's not really needed. So I would also be happy with less power in, in this vehicle. But definitely, of course, when you saw the very first acceleration, yeah, that was already a lot of fun so nice upgrades here with the facelift and still a very enjoyable ride with the Alpha Julia what do you think
And now to our conclusion for the day with the Alfa Giulia Veloce as a facelift. Well, indeed, the face has not been changed. And I think that's also quite okay because it is such a beautiful vehicle, I think. Please tell me also your opinion. Well, yeah, it could have used some LED lamps definitely, but the bi-xenon lights, they already give you quite some lighting performance. At least the halogens are completely gone now. Then on the interior, improved build quality at some stages, especially in the middle console. That makes a better you know, impression now, definitely. And I mean, it's not a cheap brand. You have to calculate about 37 to a maximum about 60,000 euros for the Julia and and of course, also you now compare it in US dollars, so that should also be you know at the top of the game. Also, as for the interior build quality, we've seen some flaws are there, yes, but mostly not in parts which you would use in everyday uh, driving life. So I think that's also quite okay. And as for this respect, also good to have this new steering wheel, both for the visual part and especially also for the steering feeling, because it's more natural now. And you know, before I had some situations when I were going a motorway with the preface of Julia and um I mean it's it it has good reaction but then you were like driving really fast and just a slight steering response like, like oh whoa <laughs> but that's definitely better now so I think this is also one of the most significant changes. Well as for the engine here with the orbit drive model a lot of power here and also more traction to the ground of course Personally, I would go for the best price performance deal. I always advise that one to you. Go with the smallest petrol engine with rear wheel drive only. Have a little bit smaller turning circle because here with the all-wheel drive, yeah, it really has a turning circle like a tractor. So um, that's definitely a big disadvantage. And also the fuel consumption is way too high with this car. That might also be a little bit better with the lower horsepower trim of the petrol engine. And also if you do not have all-wheel drive, this can also improve the fuel economy there a little bit. And the seating choices, at least in European markets, we have quite good choices. So my favorite would actually be um, uh, Julia Petrol, here also in Misano Blue with rear-wheel drive, and probably those fabric leather red seat mix on the interior. That would be my configuration tip for today. And then you can get... Um, anyway, check out how close you can get to this one in your market and also maybe give me your favorite configuration there in the comment or if you're already an existing alpha julia customer please tell us your feedback what have you experienced with your car pro and con so it's always good to have the real customer feedback here also in the comments we can learn from that and of course also new potential buyers as well so what do you think about the alpha julia facelift here and especially in the veloce trim today I hope to see you also, yeah, maybe at the pre-facelift review when you are interested in the diesel we've tested right there, or also at some of the competitors we've tested of the Alfa Giulia, thinking about the Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, or Mercedes C-Class. Also tune into those reviews, see you there, and of course, at one of our next episodes. Thank you and bye.